This conference will now be recorded. Hi, everyone. So this is Sridhar Gajulapalli. So I have told in the last session that I will be giving some information about the software job in Singapore. So today we are going to see some information like how to get a software job in Singapore. Okay, rather than saying like a tips, like more information because a few of them have been asking me for a uh, Singapore job market. How is the market there and all those stuff. So I'll try to give you as, as much as information which will help you in understanding the market of the software industry in Singapore. So before we go into the software jobs, you need to understand a different type of people like population point of view in Singapore. How do they how many people are there? And then the second thing is types different types of visas we have. So let us go into the details first. So I can categorize the population in Singapore as the following. The first category is like citizens of Singapore who are like the locals who are considered as the locals here and then permanent resident uh, the permanent residents are those people who are from other countries if they have come to singapore for a sufficient period of time they have stayed like five years to ten years time and then they apply for permanent residentship and they get the permanent residentship then it is not like the other countries for example if you take canada and australia Without going to Canada, without going to Australia, you can still apply for PR for Australia and Canada. Like you have some exam, some English exam, IELTS, and then some your qualification, all those matters as a points. But that is not possible in case of Singapore. You cannot apply for a PR without staying in Singapore. You have to stay in Singapore for a certain period of time. Right? So that is out, uh, that is thing. And the next one is employment pass. So this is the visa which we get most of them who are coming from foreign countries, especially from India, Malaysia, China, and Indonesia. These are the Philippines. So Singapore has a major influx of software consultants from especially mainly from India and then followed by Philippines. Now Philippines is giving a lot, lot of tough competition for us from Indian Indians perspective. And then China has been uh, uh, China is also as a one of the major shareholder in terms of providing employees and the local. So these employment passes will be given to those people who are flying from different countries. And they will be given to an employment pass. So employment pass is generally uh, given to the software consultants. And then the next category will be S pass. S pass is like low low skilled labor, like for example, construction side labor workers. Most of the labors labor pass and even some low lying people also like low income salary. If you are less paid. Then you will get S pass. Employment pass is like a high payment you will get high salary you get. But for S pass, you get low salary. And one more difference between employment pass and S pass is um, employment pass can apply for dependent passes. At the bottom, you can see for spouse and children, like your wife and children can get dependent passes for if you are an employment pass holder. And then S pass, you cannot sponsor or you cannot get dependent passes. That is a single individual visa. And then work permits we have, which is for helpers and mates. Like we have, uh, we can bring people from different countries, like especially from India, Myanmar, Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia. The mates and helpers come here, they get work permits. That is very still less pay when compared to S pass and employment pass. Like the minimum pay is like around 400 Singapore dollars which is equivalent to around in Indian rupees. It would be around 20 to 22,000 rupees per month. And the student pass those who get admissions into the local colleges and local institutions and universities, they get student pass depending on their term. 
and then dependent pass i told you this dependent passes will be given to those who have ha holding employment pass here okay now coming to how do we get an employment pass so we we fall under as a software consultants you are eligible to get employment pass in singapore so how can you get this employment pass in singapore first thing employment pass should be applied by the respective company who is interviewing you and that that company has to apply you or suppose you are in india or whatever the country you are in the there is a requirement in singapore they, they call you they take your interviews once you clear it interview if they are keen to take it to take you as an employee they have to apply for employment pass the local company in singapore will apply for employment pass if that is approved then you can fly from the respective country into the singapore so without this employment pass you cannot enter into singapore as a employee otherwise you can just enter as a visitor visitor visa as a tourist visa so but currently because of this covid situation we have uh, no visitor visas issued and uh, even the employment passes are also currently stopped giving to outside employees outside people so maybe after six months the position gets normalized so maybe then you can apply for it or you can search for the jobs in singapore so we'll discuss more about that employment pass so i hope all of you got some um some picture or some idea about this so moving on ahead vacancies in singapore okay coming to the vacancies of singapore especially in software industry here the booming industries are telecommunications banking sector these are the two main booming sectors so they are very prosperous banking is very high in profits and even uh, telecommunications in high in profits so if you are working in banking background or a telecommunications background and related softwares like what all softwares bank will use what all softwares telecommunications will use so you will have a high probability of getting a job in Singapore okay so that is what I'm saying and rather other jobs are like minimal like for example SAP SAP is not so good in Singapore when compared to other non SAP technologies you have a lot of demand for banking technologies and telecommunications but SAP is not so good whatever so when a vacancy is a when a vacancy comes up in any company it is a there is a local quota government singapore government has decided the locals should be hired so that is what we call as a local quota we are not sure exactly what is the percentage of that they have to maintain certain proportion in the company like in a company out of 100 you can take like 50 50 i guess I'm, I'm not this is not exact figure but i'm guessing is it might be 50 50 percent 50 percent locals and 50 percent for foreigners so the locals include here citizens and prs so i told you pr means who has been in singapore for many years so far and then they attain the pr permanent residentship so those people and this job whenever a vacancy comes that job is reserved for these locals only they can apply for that vacancy for 28 days so means uh, when a job is posted in the market only locals like citizens and prs only can apply for that job like people like uh, holding like employment pass or s pass are the people from outside the country who are not in singapore outside the singapore they can only apply after this period after 28 days only so generally if the uh, citizens are very less we have we don't have most of the citizens from it sector so prs will be a tough competition so prs are like uh, you can say those who came to singapore before 2010 they are all prs now after 2010 i can see very rarely the pr residentship has been given to many people not not so many people has been given so we have very less people after 2010 before 2010 many people are there in, in uh, 
from India especially who got PRs so the people who came to Singapore before 2010 they have very high chances of getting the PR they had got the PR already most of them but after that so what I'm tell, what I'm trying to tell is if you are in a technology which is a world old enough which is before 2010 and above old one there will be a competition for from PR side PRs also available in Singapore but if you are in a technology which is very new like you take all the new technologies like big data Hadoop uh, the RPA etc etc and SAP also new technologies if you talk about SAP especially s 4 HANA implementations GRC 12 implementations UI5, Fiori consultants, these are all new from SAP point of view. Uh, so you can rely on these. So you have a pretty good chance of getting a job in Singapore if you are into these uh, new technologies that have evolved in 2010 and after 2010. So because of this, the old technologies, they are reserved for the locals and we may not get a job and you have a tough competition in getting a job here. Okay, after 25 days. So as I told you, the first two people, they will reserve the job for them. So if they get the job, the position will be closed. If the position is still open, if the company cannot able to find any citizen or a PR, then they come to the people who are staying in Singapore, locally available with employment pass or S pass or DPs even, dependent pass. The spouses also can work, the DPs also they look for them locally available people even if the locally available people are not available or not suitable for the job then they come for foreigners then they will say this job is open for foreigners so people from other countries like india philippines china anybody can apply for it and then the recruiting companies and recruiting agencies look for the first they look for citizens they look for prs they look for locally available employment passes if none of them available then comes the final category foreigners okay so what is the good chance of you getting a job as a foreigner you are staying in india and what are the chances of you getting a job there are some factors which will uh, I can say they are more important when it comes to getting a job. It will raise your chances of getting a job in Singapore. What are those? So these are the some factors that help you in getting a job in Singapore as a software consultant. First thing you should have a reference in Singapore. So why I am saying a reference in Singapore? The reason is whenever a vacancy comes in Singapore, in any company the first person to know about it is a local employees the local within the company and then it spreads out slowly to the other people to other companies so if you have any reference like a good friend or a good colleague or anybody in singapore it is very high chances that you can know about it there is a vacancy and you can apply for it without this reference you never know there is an opportunity at all in singapore okay this is a very good most important factor which plays a crucial role so even when i because when i am i am working as sap security and grc consultant here whenever any job comes a opening comes i just check whether i, I can up, i can ask my friends to apply for it my consulting firm or the company so then they if they say okay then the below things come into picture what are the below things for example technical knowledge as i told you you have to be perfect in your technical side because as a reference whatever the reference you have in singapore they can arrange your interview but the next thing lies on you only clearing the interview technical knowledge technical knowledge plays a crucial role here so if you are updated with the current requirements the job requirements as I told you, the new technologies, what are in the market, if you are updated with that, then you have high chances of getting selected. And the second problem what the other people have, most of the people in India have is, 
we are not ready to accept the contract jobs in Singapore it is like 80% are contract jobs 20% I can say very it is only permanent jobs so you should be ready to accept the contract jobs so people who are staying in India most of them are on permanent positions they don't uh, they don't like to convert themselves into a contract job in Singapore so this is what you have to get ready ready to accept for the contract job whether it is three months or six months or one year generally it would be one year most of the contracts sometimes it could be less than that like six months and three months also so even you should be ready for it so if you are look, lucky enough so if you are getting one year of contract time it is a good period within that one period one year time you can uh, increase your contacts and network within Singapore and you can get job next job after the completion of contract or sometimes even the same contract may get extended also so even for my I came here for six months contract now I am almost completed three years in Singapore so my job I initially got six months contract then it keep i i got a new job and then again the contract get extended it goes on now i am spending my fourth year now i have come successfully completed three years in singapore so you never know so be ready to accept the contract jobs and then the notice period this is one of the biggest hurdle in singapore it is always like, like a immediate joining they expect you to join within one month maximum 15 days to one month but in India most of the IT companies have a notice period like three months three months no chance at all so you should be available within 15 to 30 days time if you are ready to join within 15 to 30 days time and ready to accept the contract jobs and if you are good at technical then your reference will work the first point will work in in your favor when you are ready with below three okay so please keep that in mind so from sap sap perspective sap grc especially sap as i told you new technologies are in demand like uh, all the new technologies s4 hana implementation hana database admins fury consultants and then grc 12 the new new versions whatever are coming in the market bw on hana business objects abap with ui5 uix user interface and ui5 all these things are in demand so if you are good at that then you can, you have a good probability of getting a job in singapore but mind that you have to be ready with the following things okay right so if you have any questions regarding this you can just uh, put in the comment section so that's all I have I think I have given you enough information now so you can go ahead and look for it if you still have any questions just uh, okay one more important thing I forgot to say coming to experience point of view most of the jobs in Singapore are most ex look they look for experienced people only they don't look for freshers so there is no scope of getting a, a fresher getting a job in Singapore there is only chance for an experienced person the experience should be minimum five to six years of experience minimum okay so if you have a good of five to six of six years of experience in the in your software industry then you have a high probability of getting a job here right so that's all about these details so if you have any questions please put in the comment section so that i can give you in more information about that particular area right thanks everyone see you all in next video